You just got a package. We just got a package. We just got, and you know what? YouTube's not gonna gonna block us because my singing is nowhere near the actual tune. I agree. So uh, stay tuned, everyone. When we come back from the intro little scene, I will show you what I just got delivered to me. We're doing an unboxing. Goody. You can't put the knife in and start opening it yet. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, look at that knife too. Wow. That's not a knife. This is a knife. This is a knife. Here I go. I'm opening it. And then I'm safely closing my knife back so that I don't cause any issues. I have a story Uh, about that. (laughs) This, I just got it delayed. I just went to my front uh, porch, picked it up off of the porch. Okay. But just delivered just now. Just now. Are more message center show stickers. You mean you so, had to get a second batch? Yeah, and there's quite a few of them. Wowzers. So we need to somehow give these away. I just don't yeah. know how to do that and do it financially reasonably so that <laughs> I don't break the bank. Um, <laughs> but we have plenty of stickers that we need to give away. So be looking out for something it's going to have to be people who follow us on twitter and facebooks and stuff so we'll figure that out and make sure that we provide those to you so hello everyone and welcome to today's show all right well um after all that the exciting unboxing they're not so exciting uh, technical difficulties um we have a show to do um excited to see some more stickers that we can we can share out i know i've got a few that i can still send and and share with people but we have um, an interesting show uh, sometimes some weeks some of the content is a little dry and that's not to say that the content isn't important to know about um, but uh, this time it's le- not so much about just the admin side of things but also user experience and uh, some some good teamwork type of stuff uh, mm-hmm. some good uh, what else would you say about it Daniel well I think this time, I'd, a lot of this is about content and finding and sharing content. Mm. I think this week is a, a lot of these features. So, um, and some of that content is us, meaning people. We'll talk about that in uh, for teams, but some of it is all actually you know documents and that kind of thing too. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So first up, yeah, Daryl, we have. Um, I think this is mine, right? Results from, and this is our title. It is. Results from Power BI coming to Microsoft Search in SharePoint and Office.com, MC220668. Thank you very much for fixing the title because the title has Power BI as two words. The actual announcement doesn't. Uh, So that's kind of interesting. But, so what is this all about? Right now, if you go, if you're logged into your organization tenant and you go to bing.com and you do a search you know we've talked about this before in the show where you can get Mm -hmm. your organization results uh in with bing with microsoft search well now in those results you can get power bi results so power bi dashboards um workspaces will show up for you this announcement is talking about those same results coming when you do a search in sharepoint online and the office.com landing page, so that that site. So this is coming, to, uh, starting to roll out late August for targeted release and cl- completed by early September, and then standard tenants being getting it starting mid September, and hopefully by late September have it all rolled out. And you'll just see they're calling it a vertical, but it's just kind of a, another tab in the search results <laughs> for Power BI uh, to, to get those results. I mean, it's it's kind of a simple uh, announcement here, but it's all about finding content. And I think Power BI is one of those where people are creating great content, creating information to share. But if you can't find it, then how are you supposed to consume it? Mm. Right. So. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, it does help that if you are searching for a certain term or keyword, that uh, part of that picture might be to present some of your 
your data, so your statistics, um, to try and mm -hmm. uh, paint some more of that picture around the documents and the collaboration that you've had. Um, I do think that I can show some of this. I'm not sure if this is what we currently have. Let's flick this over. If I went to Bing, for example, and search for I don't know, Microsoft Teams, I don't actually use Power BI a lot in my own tenant. But if we search for all our organizational results, you'll start to see a Power BI option there. Now, that, has that been That's there right. for a while? A little while. Yeah. And now it's more about uh, it coming to office.com. And SharePoint. And SharePoint, yes. which is probably not there. Let's just flick that open. Did you find that this uh, sidebar for the apps took a little while to come through consistently? For it each did. Of people? So Daryl's talking about on office.com. We, we've talked about this on the show. They're going to change the way oh, office.com worked and those icons would show up on the right mm. hand side for the app launcher. They would actually show up there. And yes, I did find that it uh, took a little while. So Daryl, you have it uh, yep. already, Power BI results, uh, that vertical. So if you, you said you don't use it very much, so if you click on it, you probably won't find anything there. But if you, especially since you search for Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, I, wonder if, you know. I wonder if it's going to pick up on uh, Microsoft 365 analytics usage. You know what I mean, the uh, I usage analytics. So let's see if we... Uh... Yeah, but with... I don't know if that they re did they rename that to Microsoft 365. It used to be Office there it is. 365. But, yep, there it is. Boom. So uh, Daryl's showing the results on Power BI Vertical there from Office.com. He is in a targeted tenant, so he's got the results. Yay! Yeah. And that's that's showing a mixture of reports and mm -hmm. apps and a dashboard. So it's picking up on that keyword all the way through. And it gives a good indication there underneath it what it is. So is this yes. an app or is this just a report? Before you click on it, you'll be able to see that. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. So yeah. It, it also relies, it would seem, on, on your naming too and the way that you've named that sure. item, that report. So that's good to yeah. see. How about that? Um, yeah. So, uh, Daryl, what about some simplified... Uh, way to manage smooth. notifications. Do you want yeah, to cover something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, super smooth. Um, it's actually interesting to see this because I'd, I'd been putting quite a bit of thought into a, a video I created recently around notifications, and it has been a reasonably hot topic on and off on social media about how to manage notifications within Teams and whether they're behaving the way that you expect them to. Um, so yeah, simplified way to manage your team's notification settings, and that is MC220702. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because I've put all this work into explaining it, and now the UI is changing. So this is what the product does, right? <laughs> uh, it's good to see some of these changes, and I'll pass some comment on it. I, I have... Uh, you know, blown up the, the two different views. But it's not so much about how um, the notifications operate, although we can't really tell a lot from just screenshots. Uh, but it should simplify your choices so that when you hit that landing page, um, you can choose the appropriate settings. So I look forward to doing a re-recording <clears throat> re of, of my video. Um, what do we have currently? Um, well, okay, Daniel, let me ask you this. Okay. Are you using the default settings for notifications in Teams? Mm, not really. No, I've changed some of them okay. uh, to give me more mo notifications, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some I've turned completely off. Yeah, yeah, okay. So if we work our way down here, and we won't spend too much time on it, um, but currently we change our, the way that mentions uh, operate. And we've got a few choices about how we're notified, whether we get a banner notification down the bottom right-hand corner, banner and email, meaning you'll get an email notification if you miss that banner. Uh, and then there's also only show and feed. And in some cases, you also have the option to turn it off. Interesting here that in the screenshot, I see these two here. Uh, this example, someone doesn't want any team mentions and they also don't want to know about chat at all, right? So get rid of it. I don't want yeah, to hear right. it from anyone. Great, great demo. Now, uh, if someone had a look at this, and it's part of the motivation for why I created the video, 
wow, okay, what do we choose and what does it all mean? And it's just all quite overwhelming. I think I'll just stick with the defaults. But if we look at our new uh, arrangement of these settings, it leads with missing activity email or missed activity email. Uh, ignore the setting because yep. maybe you want that on or off. Um, but yeah, it's trying to let people uh, remove that email notification uh, short, and, short and fast. Um, and then getting into Teams channels and notifications. I like this one because it looks to be consistent with when you set the notification mm -hmm. on a channel at the channel level. You might mm -hmm. be interested in a channel, then you'll tune your notifications depending on, on how engaged you want to be with that channel. And mm -hmm. it's good to see that setting consistent at the default level that we're sitting here. But I'm wondering about what's under these edit buttons. What is under these edit buttons? And yeah, no we, we don't get to tune anything about how team mentions or personal mentions um, behave. So At least you don't think so. No. Because we don't know what's under the edit buttons. We'll know when it rolls out to us. But I th I really like to I like this being able to choose category. You could choose all activity. I want to get all the notifications, or mm. I want to get mentions and replies, which are which is kind of that. I don't want to hear all the noise, but I do want information that's kind of important to me. Meaning people who have responded to something I posted or or pinging me. Mm. Um, you know, or, you know, replying to me or whatever. So I like that. And then the third being that custom, you can fine tune how you want. The switch that you were talking about, I, I believe most people at the top for the missed activity emails, I actually suggest most people leave that on, mm -hmm. especially when they're just starting to adopt teams. Uh, because if you're just starting to use it, you're probably used to whatever you've been using, whether that's you know, email or Yammer or whatever it is. And if you don't pay attention to Teams, you don't get notifications, then how do you know what's going on? And mm. those emails can be very important to keep you, hey, there's stuff going on. You've been at mentioned, you know, there's pay attention what's going on. And then as you go through and you get more, I guess, uh, mature with your adoption, be able to you know switch that off if you if you're in teams all the time and you see all of your notifications mm, mm. and i i like that this is per user because not everybody is ready to turn those notifications off or to you know tweak these notifications uh all at the same time however uh the i think that then puts the onus on the user right daryl i mean so that yeah. means everybody's got to touch this if they want to fine tune that. That's right. And, and, and we generally find that the defaults promote activity um, within the team and try to draw you into the product. So you'll, you'll probably see the default for this being on. Uh, but you're right. If you're transitioning yourself from working mostly in email mm -hmm. to working in Teams, then you'll start using the activity feed as your inbox. And you'll be checking that more often. So you probably don't need the email notification. Right. Anyway, we've got uh, uh, a couple of things there to say about that. That seems to be landing, rolling out early September. We expect it to be complete mid-September. Uh, and it is one that you might want to make people aware of in terms of how to set these things. Uh, dare I say it, though, probably many of you, many of your organizations haven't even showed people how to set notifications. Shame on you. Probably not. Ooh. Well, shame on you, but you, you highlighted it initially where we're, you were talking about the way it is now. Yeah. It actually is not very straightforward in no. what, what is this talking about and what, what is the setting actually doing. So people yep. should definitely check out that video. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So I want, Daryl, improved yes. warning on locked office files, don't you? Everyone wants this. Well, I do. I do. It's, it's something that um, I'm always looking out for to see if uh, the file is locked. Yes. Right. So our next message, OneDrive Sync, improved warning for locked office files, MC220725. This is, if you've used, I've used OneDrive Sync, I mean, for a very long time, back when it wasn't even OneDrive Sync. It was Groove. And we've all we've kind of had this struggle with what happens in those fringe cases. If you're online and you're working on a document, it's syncing, everything's grand, okay? Mm. 
-hmm. But those fringe cases where you lose connectivity, maybe you you take your laptop on a plane or your internet goes down, but you keep working, right? Because you have a sync client. And when you're saving locally, you get back online, it syncs. But what happens when someone else has made a change to that document while you were offline? And this is kind of the big, I think one of those places where the syncing fails us as uh, users is that, well, we've got changes now, what do we do? Mm. And Office does Office does a pretty good job at merging. So don't get me wrong there. I think we it does a pretty good job, but the sync client just doesn't know what to do and it has issues. And this kind of harkens back to the, I don't know, what, two, three years ago, maybe three years ago, when off the OneDrive sync client was terrible about having it. If you had an issue, it would just it would just die and it would just would not sync at all. Um, and users complained and complained, but it's gotten so much better. But there's still this kind of these fringe cases. When I connect back, what happens? I get this. I'm still syncing kind of uh, what's it called? Um, processing changes. Mm. Just constantly going processing changes. Well, now it's going to say, hey, there's a sync issue. And this is the document that there is a sync issue. So uh, again, this is another simple file or simple post, uh, but it, I think it's going to be big for end users because it actually tells you what's going on and lets you know that there's an issue rather than giving you false hope that the syncing issues will resolve at some point. So some pretty impressive um, engineering in the background to give you that experience, making you feel like you're editing this live. Uh, and then if you are offline, merging those changes together. Uh, uh, to me, it, mm -hmm. it, it it's a little sad when you look at that and think, ah, oh, really? File is locked? I thought we could co-author. What's going on here? Um, but there are some changes. But again, it's changes. the fringe cases. It's yeah, the fringe it is. cases because you're not co-authoring. You, you made edits offline, for instance, yeah. and someone else was making edits too. So uh, I, I, I'm okay with it. I mean, merging files, I don't, you know, I think we've get, we're getting better at it. Office is getting better at it. It's just one of those things where you have to power through it. If you're going to work like this, fine. It's great um, to be working on files and it, it's great that it'll save offline and then try to mm. sync. Mm. But um, we'll have to manage that merging. As far as this rollout, early September, and uh, rollout will be completed in late September. That's the one. There we go. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to hear have... more about Teams, Daryl. Well, it, yeah, there's there's a lot that happens with Teams regularly. New Teams meeting pre-join experience. Pre-join. Join in this meeting. You get a preview of what your video looks like if you've turned it on. Um, it usually tries to guide you to have your camera on for meetings. Um, you'll usually see a, a button there to, to uh, turn your audio on or off. And if there's a few people that have already joined, you might see that already muted. So that's good. You come into a meeting and uh, you are muted. Now this uh, update is MC220785 and it simplifies the pre-join experience. Uh, it's all about simplification today. Um, let's just open this up in a new tab, see if it helps us to see that better. Yeah, not bad. All right, so we have a friendly face, your friendly face. Um, you will be able to see computer audio straight away. And this is one of the key things when people are joining meetings, especially if they've got multiple headsets or a couple of devices that, that are options to them. Um, could be Bluetooth headsets or, or whatever. Uh, but I'm, finding, I'm finding that being one of the biggest problems. It is. It's yeah. because your laptop, you know, people joining with a laptop that has a microphone and a speakers, and if they have a plugged in something, why mm. is it not, you know, why yep. can't I hear it? Uh, yeah. It, I mean, it should be plug and play when people turn things on or they plug it into that USB port, and we do see that generally happen. Um, but there's confusion around when you come off a docking station and you, you go and take your laptop somewhere else in the building. Uh, so good to see that option front and center, check your audio uh, and you'll, you'll see whether you're using the right device or not, whether you're muted and can dial your um, audio up and down. But the in other interesting options there, because it's leading with audio, video, great, turn it on or off, fine. But the key thing is that you are aware of your audio choices 
um, and that if you want to be dialed in, then you've got phone audio. So that will be a choice there to get the meeting to dial you in if, if that's an option your organization uses. And if you're using Microsoft Teams room devices, um, then you're going to see an option there for room audio. It, Teams is smart enough to know that there is a, a room device available to use and if you're wanting to use that instead, then it just makes it as simple as a click. Background filters and all the other options will be underneath your settings cog, but good to see those important ones front and center. Uh, so what have we got more to say about the update? Uh, that it is... See, it's interesting, we keep seeing this this different format for key points. We do. Yeah? We do. It, we, we've talked with... You and I have met with the team, and we've talked about it's great to have consistency mm. at the top. What, what are the key points? Call it out for us so when admins are looking at this, they know mm. what, when, and how so they can direct this update to whoever it needs to go. Uh, and some of are really good. For this one, it's really good. Bam, we've got five bullet points right up there, key points, here's what's happening. Yep. Others, you have to actually read. I, I know how silly that sounds, but you actually have to read it and go, okay, when, you know. Uh, so I think, you're right consistency we, we talk about that on the show a lot we'd really yep. like more of it so we can see mid-september through end september i expect it to roll out um roll in at user level i like i kind of like this breakdown too because it, it lets you know what to expect it is a user control <laughs> review and assess so you're <laughs> getting some yeah okay <clears throat> of course <throat> of course we are Good, good. <laughs> and you might want to update your user training and materials. Don't need to do that because I'm pointing at your materials, Microsoft. <laughs> so let's right. see if you update your support page. Of course, exactly. You if you're using <laughs> Learning Pathways or some other yep. source, you know the way you're surfacing that to your organization. Let's see if those uh, get updated. That they're doing a pretty good job. The uh, but I, I like this update. It is. We're, we're actually in a transition right now with this new meeting experience. It doesn't look mm -hmm. exactly like this, but they've even updated it since, you know, uh, before this update. So, you know, it's kind of like we're on version 1.5. Uh, at least I am now with the new when if you toggle mm. the new meeting experience and then this will be like version 2.0, I guess. But. Yeah, I, I would also say that, that the meeting experience that you're seeing here, pre-join meeting experience, is in the team's desktop application so uh, it doesn't say anything about what it looks like within the web browser we have seen that change too because mm -hmm. it introduces do you want to download teams do you want to work out of the web browser do you want it to, to phone you in and so there's a few options there um, maybe we'll see some consistency between that too well i think so because if you you know you're looking at this update it actually doesn't call out the desktop uh, yeah. now you know, so I I do want consistency across all, you know, web and desktop. And I want consistency with mobile and with Mac. And I know I'm asking for a lot here, but uh, I, I definitely want to see that. So I think we'll, I think we'll get it. All right. Well, uh, our next update, let's think of a nice, easy transition. How do we frame the segue up? Ah. Keep people out of your stuff for too long. Yeah, keep people um, out of your stuff. Um, you know, how do you want to deal with guests in uh, OneDrive and SharePoint, uh, Daniel? Guests are like fish after three days. Um, so, <laughs> so this one is new feature. Manage how long guests can access SharePoint Online and OneDrive documents, MC220. Seven nine one, and I'm I'm actually really excited about this one because this is all about managing that guest access and really taking giving users the capability of sharing, but also satisfying that need for administrators and those that are in governance positions to feel comfortable with that sharing. And what I mean by that is so often we get this push of, well, if we allow guests, they, what are they going to see and how long can they see it? And how do we manage this? Meaning you give someone a guest access and you look two years later and they still have access, right? And wait, they shouldn't have access that long, maybe, you know? So this is for, uh, this update is all about giving you the ability as an admin to set the a timeout period. And it uses an example in this, 
for as uh, in this update for as 10 days, I think, but you can set this for however many days you want. But so that if I, as a site owner, invite an external person to be a guest and they get into my site and they can see content, whether it's a, a document I shared with them or it's the whole site, however I shared, they will be able to get access to that content for the period uh, number of days that have been set by the tenant admin, if that is set. It's a checkbox and you have to put in the number of days on the sharing, um, sharing page in the admin center. And I think there's a screenshot in that. So this, okay, so what happens, they give an example, 10 days. 10 days happens, I've shared it. 10 days have expired, what happens? Well, if the site owner does nothing, then the guest loses access. They no longer have access. If the site owner renews that access, then they get 10 more days of access. And then 10 more, and then 10 more, and then 10 more, If as long as the site owner keeps renewing this. So you can imagine there's a balance here, and it, I think it's going to be different for every organization. Some 10 days is going to be great. Three days may be great. Other organizations, you're going to need to make it longer because uh, your site owners are not going to want to continue getting those emails, those notifications saying, you have a guest that is expiring access. Do you want to renew this access? And so there's going to be a balance for organizations to to strive for here, and you got to find it um, working with you know your users, but also from your governance team. But I think this update fills that need that I've seen for simple guest expiration. I'm not trying to kick my guests out; I just want them to stop having access to content that's been shared with them after a period of time, mm. because this is not kicking guests out of your tenant. Think about this: you have three sites. Whether they're a OneDrive, someone on their OneDrive has shared it out, or it's three SharePoint sites. And you share, site one shares it with guests. Two days later, site two shares with that same guest. Site three, two days later, shares with that, that guest. Each one, going with our example before, has 10 days. So 10 days for the first site, and then the guest doesn't have access. 10 days after being shared on the second site, they don't have access to set the second site. And then site three, same thing. So it's not, I'm kicking the guest out, nor am I, uh, as a site owner saying, no, I'm not gonna renew them, then now they don't have access to everything else that's been shared with them. It's just the content that I have shared with them. If it's expired past that that time period, then then they don't have access. Uh, so I, I really like this, this is one, um, you know, I feel like one uh, kind of uh, weapon in the arsenal of managing guests, uh, because I think a lot of organizations struggle with this. And it's good to have some some appropriate defaults there to take care of those those cases where people aren't um, managing that access themselves. It's it's quite a bit to try and keep a keep a track of uh, if you're That's right. collaborating with people. Correct. So yeah, good yes. to see that option. Um, and when is that when is that coming out? Well, that is, thank you for asking, Daryl. Uh, that is, let me read because it doesn't have, I already know, but uh, this is a point on the consistency bit. We don't have the bullet list the at bullet the top. Points. Oh. Uh, late August, it's rolling out and it should be completed by the end of October. So these are, this is one of those announcements where we don't know. Does that mean it's they're just going to roll it out to everybody forget targeted and standard just everybody and it's just you're going to fall somewhere in there or does it mean late august start with t targeted and then by the end of october we have moved through targeted and then we get to standard and then we've ended with standard they don't give us that detail which stinks um would love to have this one improved in fact i'm going to thumb down this message and ask the, that very question this one um so i will do that yes i'm going to thumb that down remember and we know this for fact, that if you have questions about a message, meaning it's not clear, it's not, you have no, you, you just don't know what's going on here, you don't know why you received it or, or whatever, you can always thumb down that message and give an explanation of, hey, I, I don't understand, this is not clear to me what's happening or when it's happening or whatever. Uh, and you could submit that. And the team, the message center team, does read every one of those. Um, so if they need to, they can contact you as long as you check that box and have your email address in there. 
Good, good. Demonstrated yep. that. So, uh, finishing off uh, today with uh, something mm-hmm. that sounded simple when I first looked at it, and then you dive into it like, what? That scowl on your face says a lot. (laughs) (laughs) What? Yammer. Yeah, thank you. You have to describe that to the the podcast audience. Uh, Yammer account activity page retirement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Activity page retirement. Uh, Pretty simple. MC220404. Even a simple ID to remember. Yammer will be retiring the account activity page. And I have to read this because it becomes... An interesting mouthful. So they're retiring it uh, from the admin center for administrators September 11th. Instead, we recommend using the Yammer OAuth token destroy API, which is where we will continue to invest. What? Investing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. d- d- investing in destroying APIs, token mm-hmm. destroying. Um, so, yeah, we have some bullet points, but I, I do want to just go through and simplify this. What does this mean? Um, uh, here's something I prepared earlier. Uh, we'll bring this over to our... Do, 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 do. There we go. Is that showing? No, it's not. Ah, stinker. Ah, uh, okay. Did you call me? Oh, I, I didn't call you that. No, it's just the way <laughs> that I've shared this. Um, let's yes. see if I can drop that into here. Does that work? Yes, good. That's a Yammer. All right, separate separate window. That was the problem. So we're in we're in modern Yammer, um, but this is talking about a you might say a legacy setting for network admins. Um, up at the top, go to your settings and your cog, and then down into Edit Network Admin Settings. Now, what is this setting all about? There was uh, the ability to to go in and make sure that uh, people are signed out. Uh, account activity and so let's have a look here we have a search box we can go in and say all right well daryl's recently left um the company um and we just want to make sure that he's not signed into multiple different places or daryl's having some problems where he's signed into a few different places uh let's go in and we'll force a log out on the different locations that he might be working in um and that's what that's about, the account activity page. Nice UI. What are we moving to? We're moving to, um, let's go in here. Destroy. They made it easier, right? Uh, no. But they're going to continue to invest in that area is what I, what I read. Um, you need to use an API. Uh, you will gather a CSV file together of the user IDs where you want to destroy their tokens or tokens. And in plain speak, you're logging them out. <laughs> yeah. um, you use that CSV file, you use um, the, the OAuth token, you make a few choices in here about how you want it to operate. Um, you can either say, uh, kick them out of third party only, or kick them out of everything that's signed into Yammer. And that is the show in terms of that update. Not simple to well, use right now, but they're continuing to invest in it. Yeah, and it's not it is not simple at all and I think the you, this whole idea of dis, it may scare you a little bit this destroying third party tokens. <laughs> but it's not that complicated. However, it is way more complicated than what you showed before, which is you go through the UI, look at account activity, search for somebody and say log out. Mm, mm-hmm. It that is simple. Now you have to go through this convoluted way of doing it I, this is one of those areas where they're reverting they're going from you know simple through the ui to no you're going to need to know an api i think it's here. i think it's leading towards uh the retirement of that network admin page and changing it to something else I, so they're just gradually so. chipping and, away at things yes i agree maybe so but still it's poo-poo. I don't, I don't. <laughs> thumb down thumb me. down oh well i mean yeah Anyway, uh, you're continuing to invest in it, so that's good. Uh, the change will happen uh, September 11th, and um, yeah, if you do need to force a log out for some people, then that's where you can do it. And, yeah, so uh, I think the last thing we need to cover, Daryl, yeah. is kind of what we started off with, was we need to make sure people are following us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can go to just slash 365 MCS on all of those platforms mm-hmm. and you'll find us because I have stickers 
that we need to give away. And I'm showing them to the camera for those watching on video, for those on the podcast. Um, they're cool. Just trust me on this. Hey, um, I've uh, grown so, my soul patch again. So can you just take a little like Sharpie yes, marker and marker. just yeah, just marker. do that underneath my bottom lip there. And I, I'm, cool. I'm going to do it right Thank now you, on yeah. everyone. So we got to figure out how we're going to give away these. So make sure you're following us there, though, because that's how we'll do it. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything else? Uh, I don't know. Well, anyway. usually on YouTube. Uh, sorry about this morning. Yes. So, so, anyway. All right. <coughs> that That's it. Um, thank you. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Um, and... Uh, do get in touch if you want you want us to cover a few things. I know that the format um, has been quite interesting and good as we deep dive deep into at least six uh, six updates. But um, we do try and look out for opportunities to demonstrate stuff too. So uh, yeah, uh, let us know in the comments below and the tweets in the Facebook uh, chat. Bye for now. Bye bye.